you've been looking into building your own food truck or your own food trailer kind of like this a empty trailer and you ask yourself can i do it myself in like my backyard in my driveway without having to hire a builder to come do it to save some cash money well you come to the right place because in this diy series how to build your food truck with me frank Voltiers, that's exactly what we're doing and in today's episode we're doing the electrical as you guys can see here we have the electrical panel and on the previous videos, we've been doing everything you see back here. And then we're going to keep going on the video series. Everything you need to know step by step on how you can build your own food truck and your own food trailer. I'm going to be showing you the way. So let's finish up the electrical. I'm going to show you how exactly I did it from A to Z. So let's get started. So if you're looking to run the electrical on your new food truck or your new food trailer, this is going to be the video for you. We're going to be installing all the electrical in this new food trailer. On this one particular, it's a 7x16 empty concession trailer. It's going to be a full full mobile kitchen on wheels, or you could do it on your food truck. It's kind of the same concept. A truck is a little bit different in certain aspects, but generally, it's the same. Uh, the, food, the breaker panel is going to be back here. We're going to install our can lights all throughout here. You can use different types of lights. I'm going to use little flat LED panels. We're going to put our uh, switches, our outlets, and our inside lights. And again, I'm Frank Baltiers on the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck uh, or Your Food Trailer. It can be either one. So let's get started right away on running all the electrical inside. We're going to be using Romex, just so you know, 14.2 and 14.3 Romex is what's on the material list for today's video pair of strippers, some pliers, a utility knife. That's the basic tools for this video that we need. Okay, so on this part right here, this is gonna be our home run uh, hole, so to speak. We're gonna be running all our home runs here. And just so you know, a home run is a wire or a conduit uh, that gets taken from the breaker panel to a destination and then from there it can split up or it can be a dedicated home run. Typically like uh, in your kitchen and oven, or an eight air conditioner would have its own home run because the wires are really big. In a kitchen, it can go to like uh, your countertop and then from there it distributes the different things like your microwave or your stove, your fridge, uh, just, but it goes, it has to land in one box and then it daisy chains to other ones. So that's what a home run is, is a wire or a conduit that goes from one, uh, from the panel to another box at a certain destination, either in your food truck or your house. So we're gonna cut a hole right here because that's gonna be our uh, switch outlet for the fridge and then that's gonna run down to there. So on here, I have to use my Sawzall again. I left my multi-tool in my work truck so I only have my Sawzall available. And also, I ran this 14-2 wire across the trailer here to be a home run that goes to the other side. I'll explain it on the end towards the recap but that's what I'm doing right here is running this 14-2 wire. So right here, what I ran is the food warmer home run, which is a straight wire that goes right here, which is the FW. What I also did is I ran the prep fridge outlet and I ran that to my outlet first. So, so the home run goes from right there to the, from the breaker panel to the switch. And from the switch, it's gonna power up that outlet. And I do it just like as a safety thing in case you wanna turn off the fridge and you don't wanna like, roll it back and unplug it that makes it super super easy easy to do and i didn't do it on my first food truck i added it later but it's super easy to do right now so i think it's a very cool addition just to do because it's pretty simple and it helps out quite a bit and then from there i ran a wire another 14 2 to the hood this is going to be like the knob for the hood and i have to run one more wire that's going to run this way through that little notch and go up through here and that's gonna power up the hood. Uh, so that's how that hood gets powered, the exhaust fan or the exhaust motor outside. So that's that part. All right, now to explain how we ran power to the other side of the trailer, this is where I switched it a little bit because I, was, I wanted to make it super easy to do. So I took a 14-2, which is that black wire, the white wire in the ground, and I ran it all the way straight to the other side and we ran it where this um, is gonna be a quad outlet. Remember, we're gonna use this as an outdoor light 
uh, switch. Remember this right there for the rope lighting. So it's gonna be right there for the outlets. And there's gonna be a big junction box because from right here, we run to the other side. So this is gonna be our home run box. Typically on the other food trucks that I did, I stopped right here at the can and I used it as a junction box. But I'm not gonna do that on this one because I don't wanna confuse you and I wanna make it super duper easy. So we're just using one cable, straight run across. Boom, and it stops at the box right there. And then how we're gonna feed our cans, I'm just gonna give you like the quick highlight is from the switch right there. We're gonna go to one can, and then that's gonna daisy chain to the other can, daisy chain to the other can, and then come over here and just daisy chain to this can. So it's gonna be one wire from that box over there, because that's where we're gonna turn them on and off, and it's just gonna go boop, 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 boop to our four lights. That's the easiest way that I can make it to uh, hopefully be very, very clear and simple to understand. So that's what we're gonna do there and then an outlet on that side for the, for like the water heater and things that you wanna do on that side over there. We're using a 14-2 and this is only going to the lights. So I ran it there, ran it there, and then it comes right over here. This is gonna go to a can light, or it can be any type of light, can light, surface mount light, whatever you guys wanna use. And then from here, we're going back that way. It doesn't matter if you go the other way as well, it's, it literally doesn't matter. We're gonna come over here, and then this is gonna be another can light right here. And then we're gonna do the same thing, down and up, another can light, and then down and up, a fourth can light right at the end where that wire is so four can lights is what i'm adding on here this is a wire that goes from the switch right here on the hood all the way up and it's gonna be it's gonna go straight up and through the roof not yet until i put my hood on that's when that's gonna go up and on here i used a 14.3 cable and the reason is because i'm gonna use that switch leg for the fan that's gonna go up there and and I'm gonna leave an extra wire up there in case whoever gets this trailer, they wanna put like an AC unit, they'll have a power wire up there that they can just run up to this little piece right there. So I just wanna make sure that I'm using, you guys know that there's a 14.3 cable right here and I'm using it just as a spare because it'll be super hard to run a wire up to the roof later, but it is really easy right now. Always think about expansion, just in case you guys wanna add something in the future, maybe, it's easier to do it now and it's cheaper. So that's a 14.3. So here I'm running the 14.2 wire that goes from can to can to can. The only thing that I can remind you of is leave enough loop inside the wall. So when you bring up your walls with the stainless steel, that edge doesn't uh, skin it or something. So just make sure you tuck it in there really nice. So I ran out of wire and I had to make another trip to buy some more Romex. Just so you know how much wire I have used or potentially you can or will be using. So this is what I originally had purchased and 14 to 50 feet. Yesterday, I bought more wire, which is another 50 feet of 14 to. And then I ran out after I started running the can lights because that uses a lot of wire. I just didn't know it was gonna be that much and I bought an extra 25 feet, which this should be enough to finish up everything that we need in this food truck, the electrical. We call it the rough-in phase. Even when I'm doing construction projects, electrical projects, there's two phases to electrical. You have your rough-in phase, and then they put the drywall, the paint, and all that fun stuff, and then you come back and you trim it. So right now we're doing the rough which is leaving the cables out and we're gonna be, we're gonna put the stainless steel and everything then the cables are gonna be sticking out and then we're gonna come back after and put the boxes. This is what, is what I needed to complete this side over here to run a power right there and then uh, to this outlet as well because that's gonna be a switched outlet for the water pump. That right there is gonna be the switch for the water pump. And then I'm just gonna put an extra outlet there and an extra outlet there uh, that's gonna be on all the time that the food truck is running. And that's gonna run up to my little crevice that I drilled right there or, or notched out, run across right here. And then that's gonna run right there to feed into this one that comes from the panel named Power. So just know you're using about 100, 
125 feet of 14-2 wire. And that's on a small basis. If you want to add more outlets, then obviously you're going to use more wire. But that's what I use, 125 feet of 14-2 wire. Alrighty, so let's run this last wire right here, which this will end, as I mentioned, the rough in electrical. And then we're going to add the stainless steel. I got to go buy the wire mold boxes. I was looking at them right now. I'm actually going to probably go with two gang. Uh, two gang means that you can add two different devices on there, make them deep. So I'm going I'm to buy the two gang deep boxes. I'm going to use about one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven seven double gangs and then two singles so i'm going to show you what those are but for now i just want to run this wire right here this is as i mentioned this is going to feed our uh, our water pump outlet and the switch but the power always goes to a switch first if you're going to use it as a as a switch outlet so there it is right there i got a splinter earlier and it's been bugging me like crazy. That's how we run the wire in here inside the wall cavity. you can run wire you can run a, a, a spare wire you can just pull it right there so this is gonna go there and then this is gonna get run all the way to the other side over here you guys can see let's see if I can fix this camera so we can switch over to this side right there boom so this is gonna run, get run over here to the top, and then we're gonna fish it down into the wire right here. And that's gonna be the power Check. as well. There it is. So then this is the last one of the wires that are left to run. And that's pretty much the rough end phase of the electrical, uh, hopefully, all the wires made sense to you. I'm going to do a real quick recap. I'm going to run through the trailer one more time, make sure that I covered everything. And as I explain it to you, then we're going to see if there's any issues in there as well. But for now, that's how I've been running my electrical on here. There it is. So I'm going to label this one power. And then I'm going to probably put something like a water pump or something like that. There it is. That's the end of our electrical, the rough in phase. And typically here, you get paid a percentage. Did I say you hire somebody, then uh, you would pay them a percentage of the job to do this part. And then they come back after you put your stainless steel, your can lights and everything, and they'll trim it out. That's called the, the final, right? Or the trim out phase. So rough in phase, and then you got your trim phase. Two different parts of the project. Just so you know, in case you hire somebody, then you can pay them half half for this and then the other half for the other part. If you do it yourself, then you just pay yourself somehow, right? You take yourself out to dinner or something. <laughs> so for that, it's lunchtime. I just wanted to finish up my wiring and let me do a real quick recap of the electrical. And then now we're ready for the stainless steel and that's gonna be the next part of the food truck series. So before I end the video today, I just want to do a quick recap on the electrical, like super brief. That way we cover everything that we need to do and make sure that we ran every wire that's needed. So let me put like the breaker panel right here where it's going to be so you guys can get a visual of how it's looking and how it's going to look like. So again, thanks for subscribing to the channel. Frank Baltierrez on the electrical part of how to build your food truck 2.0. Let's do a recap. All right. So right here. This is a panel that we're gonna use. It's a Siemens eight space breaker panel. It's a main lug style. If your health department or your city requires you to have a main breaker, you can still use this kind of breaker box. The only difference is it's gonna have a breaker up top right here 
and you won't connect to these, you'll connect straight to the breaker. That's where the main power is gonna come in from, that black cable. This is where the Romex wires are gonna come in through, which are right there. So let me stand back and let me just kind of point you how we ran everything. Okay, so I have this wire right here called cans. That's the home run that's gonna feed the cans, the switches, the lights, and the water pump. So that wire runs straight right there, it goes right there, dangles around, comes right there and comes down to the switch. From this switch, we have a wire that goes all the way over there for power, which is all, this is all power, okay? And then from there, we have another wire that runs up, goes around and comes down and it's that wire right there and that's gonna be for the water pump. I still need to run one more wire that I forgot. It's gonna go to that hole right there. That's gonna be a switch leg for the water pump. That way it turns on and off on demand whenever you need it and it's, you don't have to plug it in anymore. But that's the power wire. And that's where it ends. That's all the power. Everything to do with power that we ran a home run is there. So we go up to here, because that's gonna be an outlet. We, we're gonna uh, connect them together, go around, boom. Go down to my outlets and, outlets and switches right there, and then we daisy chain up. And that's where it ends. That's that circuit, complete. So now, we take that same power and you have to run switch legs, right? Because one is a power and one is a switch leg. When you flick the switch is when, that, when it activates that switch leg with the power. We have run the runs to the cans, which we go up there and then we come across, daisy chain, which is these wires right there, and we end it right here. It ends right there. The cans end right there, and then we have another switch leg that runs the outside lights. So we have one that pops out right there, and then we have another wire that comes up and over, and it goes to this side, which feeds that outside light outside and the rope lights. And that's all, that's it. That covers the lights, the cans, and the outside lights. Done deal. Nothing else, nothing more. There's no wires down here, nothing. Now let's go to this side. We have two more home runs. You guys can see it here. One's FW, which means food warmer, and the other one says fridge and hood. Let me point you how I ran these. One of them goes right there. From there, it goes right there, which is gonna be my fridge circuit. This is all gonna be on the same circuit because I'm only gonna have two breakers, so these two are gonna be together. The food warmer is gonna have its own circuit because typically a food warmer or something that heats up food like that, a heating element, takes up a lot of electricity. So that one goes right there and then it has another wire that runs to the bottom, which is gonna be the switch leg for that outlet so you can turn on and off your fridge. So that's that. And then from here, this wire right here runs to the hood, which is right there. And then from there, it goes up, over, and outside to the hood, which is right here. And that's gonna poke out to the ceiling. That's it. It might look like a lot more wires, but literally that's all the wires that are there. And then we have another one that runs directly, the FW, from right there to that one right there. That's the FW, which is a food warmer. It's one line that goes right there, straight down you guys do see another wire that's connected from right there to right there that is literally just an extra wire that i put extra why so it could be connected together in case something were to happen in the future let's say this wire breaks or something you never know i just like to think of worst case scenario and i was like how can i connect them, connect them together that makes it easy right now that's literally just going to get uh, bundled up inside the uh what do you call it? <laughs> the, the, the box. So there's a recap. Hopefully it, it makes sense to everybody. Any questions, please, please let me know. Drop them in the comments. That's the best way to contact me is by dropping your comments in the, dropping your comments in, um, in the video. Because if you guys send me a Facebook message, it usually goes to spam and I don't see it maybe for a few weeks. And I don't wanna think you guys, I'm ignoring you guys. So that's the recap of the electrical. It was pretty, pretty simple to do. Uh, running the rough and electrical, uh, got it done in about less than a day. Because if I counted my hours, it would be less than a day. So after this, that we're done, now we can put our stainless steel. And that's what we're gonna do next. So there you go. Let's rock and roll guys and gals. 
and then also one last detail if you have like these little nubbies or like these wires or these things in your trailer or your truck i'm gonna take them off i always take them off that way i leave the wire just hanging by itself because this actually uh, protrudes well what a fancy word right or comes out of the of the wall like when you run your wall right here this is gonna hit on the wall so i want to take these off and make it nice and flush and then they're all over the trailer especially on this side right here i'm gonna take all these off right here that way they stay nice and snug with the wall and when you get a nice clean finish with the stainless steel just want to make sure i mention that small small detail